I'm Maria Gillum Krakauer. I'm an assistant professor of neonatology at Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee. This program discusses oxygen uptake, transport, and delivery, including discussion of hemoglobin and the oxygen dissociation curve. Cases demonstrating the equations and calculations for alveolar oxygen content, arterial oxygen content, cardiac output, oxygen delivery, and oxygen consumption are presented. In this module, we will discuss oxygen uptake. The learning goals are to know the various factors affecting oxygen uptake, for you to be able to demonstrate how to calculate the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen, and for you to know how to calculate the change in alveolar oxygenation that occurs with alteration in altitude. Let's start with a case. Say we are caring for a newborn with respiratory compromise that requires mechanical ventilation and oxygen. The FiO2 being delivered to the patient is currently 0.5. Now say this patient needed to be transported from a hospital in, let's say, Nashville, Tennessee, where I am at sea level, 760 millimeters of mercury, to Denver, Colorado, where the elevation is 1,600 meters and the atmospheric pressure is 632 millimeters of mercury. In this module, we will discuss the physiologic factors that might explain why this patient requires additional oxygen and learn how to calculate the change in delivered oxygen required when the patient is transported from sea level to a higher elevation. We'll return to solve this case at the end. The amount of oxygen in blood, or the arterial partial pressure of oxygen, P small AO2, depends on the amount of oxygen in the alveoli, the P capital AO2, the ability of the oxygen to enter the pulmonary capillaries from the alveoli through diffusion, and the presence of any shunts, intrapulmonary or extrapulmonary. The arterial partial pressure of oxygen, or P small AO2, in healthy children and adults is 100 millimeters of mercury at sea level. In neonates, it is 45 to 70 millimeters of mercury, rarely higher because of shunting. When healthy children and adults breathe 100% oxygen, the alveolar PO2 can be greater than 650 millimeters of mercury and the arterial partial pressure of oxygen as high as 600. However, it doesn't get much higher than 300 to 400 in a neonate. You'll want to make sure you have a solid grasp of the nomenclature here so you don't get confused later on. The way I remember it is that the one with the capital A reminds me of a proper noun, the name al, which is the same as the beginning of alveolar. Arterial has a lowercase a. Once the oxygen diffuses into the pulmonary capillaries, it then needs to join with hemoglobin for transport. Obstruction to diffusion can disrupt oxygen uptake. A common example in the NICU is pulmonary edema. An uncommon condition is alveolar capillary dysplasia, where the capillaries are not in contact with the alveoli. Using the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen, remember big Al, P capital AO2, we can determine the difference in alveolar oxygen delivered at different elevations. This is useful in neonatal medicine if you are supervising an air transport or sending a baby who's on oxygen to live at a very different elevation. The equation is, PIO2, or the inspired oxygen tension, minus the arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide, P small a CO2, divided by R. The inspired oxygen tension can be calculated by taking the product of the FiO2 and the atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure minus the water vapor pressure. Water vapor pressure is 47. So putting the equation together, PaO2 equals the FiO2 times the atmospheric pressure minus 47 minus the P small AO CO2 divided by R. So going back to the case I presented at the beginning of the module, the newborn who required an FiO2 of 0.5 at sea level who is being transported to a much higher altitude. He's starting in Nashville where the elevation is pretty close to sea level, so the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Since the PaCO2 is not going to vary, we can solve for the new FiO2 required in Denver where the atmospheric pressure is 632. So setting up the equation, we have 0.5 times the barometric pressure in Nashville, 760 minus 47, and on the other side we have X, which is the new FiO2 that we're solving for in Denver times the atmospheric pressure in Denver minus 47. 
So on the left we have 356.5 equals x times 585, which means that our new FiO2 that our patient will require in Denver is 61%. Just to make it even easier, since the water vapor pressure is assumed to be similar, you could solve and get the correct answer without even subtracting 47 on either side. In this module, we discuss the factors that influence oxygen uptake. The factors at play are the amount of oxygen in the alveoli, or the inspired partial pressure of oxygen, which can be influenced by the atmospheric pressure, the ability of the oxygen to enter the pulmonary capillaries, diffusion, and finally, we learned how to calculate the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen and apply that to a ventilated patient requiring oxygen who is significantly changing elevation. This concludes Module 1. Thanks for your attention.